Hello and welcome, I'm Colin Daniel from RiffNinja.com and today we're going to look at how 12 bar can affect other progressions, in this case a 10 bar progression. And uh, if you'd like to learn more about this, uh, you can check it out at RiffNinja.com slash stage 3. So 12 bars always seems to be associated with the blues, but that's not necessarily true. And uh, a lot of, uh, if you know the standard 12 bar, uh, there's a lot of other progressions that are based partly on that standard 12 bar. They're taken from that 12 bar. And this is a perfect example, inspired by uh, the, the song Blue Jean Blues, uh, which was uh, written by ZZ Top, Billy Gibbons, and also uh, redone by uh, Jeff Healy, the great Canadian blues guitar player. Um, this is not a transcription or a copy. It's a study of uh, the progression and how it relates to 12 bar. And uh, we're going to, and of course, I have my own interpretation to it, and that's the whole idea in the end. An easy way to look at 12 bar is to look at it in three groups of four bars. For example, in what the most common and standard 12 bar, um, you would find that the uh, one chord is take, taking care of the first four bars. Okay, for, for bars uh, uh, five to eight, uh, that's the next four bar section. Uh, it usually has the four change for two bars, then the one change for two bars. That takes care of eight out of the 12 bars. Your last four bars uh, take care of the five change for one bar, the four change for one bar, and then uh, last but not least, the one chord again for two bars. And usually what differentiates a lot of the 12 bar is just how they close in the last one or the last couple of bars. Uh, usually it's in the last bar, but there are a few cases where uh, they use the last two bars, which is the return to the one chord, um, to close the progression, the 12 bar progression. That's your turnaround that brings you back around uh, to the beginning uh, or to the end, wh wherever you are in the, in the song. And uh, if you're wondering about these numbers, these numbers relate to the changes that are in the key. Now the key we're going to look at today is the key of A minor. And uh, originally Blue Jean Blues was done uh, in the key of B minor, but Jeff Healy did it in A minor. And uh, I was inspired by some of the bass lines for my version because I kind of uh, put a little bit of the bass line together with some of the rhythm uh, since a lot of times when I'm playing in a group of performing a song, I'm usually the only guitar player, uh, I want to fill the space up a bit so this is ideal for you guys out there that want to complete a song and not do a lot of piece work in it and actually make the song, uh, make it sound like the song, make it sound like the progression which is kind of the idea. And uh, we're going to start by taking a look at the three changes that we need. So for the key of A minor we basically need an A minor, a D minor, an E minor. In the key of A minor, A minor is the one chord. Um, D minor is the four chord. And E minor is the five chord. These are the three primary changes in that key. Now, there are other changes in here and other things going on. But the whole fact of the matter is that it's still based on those basic three changes. Now, the way I handle it, is I start with a low E bass note and it starts in early. I call it a push, right? And it starts in on the ah. It's like one, two, three, a uh, four, a uh, one. So your A minor actually comes in on the one beat of the start bar of the verse or the solos or whatever you're using it for at that moment. But this is the cycle it goes through, right? So when I count it in, I usually count in a full bar, like I'll go one, two, three, four, one, two, three. So you'll notice every time I play this, I push off the E bass note, go F major, then go a G and go an A minor. The reason why I chose those chords is because they're really closely related. You know, F major, you should know this. If you're, if you're watching this vid and you don't know F major, you're in trouble uh, because this is not a, a beginner's uh, 
approach to this song, you should already know your bar chords. But this is an F major. If you move it up two frets, it's a G major. If you move it up another two frets, it's A major. If you take your bad finger off the second finger, then it's an A minor, right? So now that's, we go from the E bass to the F major to G to A. And I use the E bass to buy me a little time when I come up to the A because if I strike the E bass, as I strike the E bass, I can actually head towards the direction of the F major and get my hand kind of half ready over it. So it saves me time. If you watch, I'm actually doing that for the change. One, two, three. Two, three. One, two, three. One, two, three. Now, the interesting thing about it, this is the E, F, and G are always used to push to the A minor. The A minor is the one change. We actually do that A minor change with the push for four bars. If you, it's four times, right? And when we started, like I said, I usually started early. Um, and uh, depending on which version uh, you listen to, uh, they use this also for the intro. And, uh, but the actual verse part of the progression, the part that you sing, is a 10 bar phrase. And it's four bars, four phrases, four cycles of this push off the A. So it's like one, two, three. There's our first bar. Our second bar, two, three. Our third bar. And our fourth bar. See, this is slow triplet, and uh, it has a really laid back feel to it, and this is why um, the push is there. It leaves you room um, when you get to the A minor to do your fills and your riffs, which is really cool. This is a very cool progression that way. It does leave you a lot of room. So now we've done the four bars of A minor, and we need to get to the four change, right? In standard 12 bar, your first four bars are the one chord. So even though we're you know, pushing off the E, the F, and the G, they're all related, right? E, F, and G are related to the key of A minor. You'll find them right inside the chord if you look close enough. Um, now we need to change to the four chord, which is a D. And I'm going to play a D minor seventh like this. This is, again, you're in trouble if you don't know a basic minor chord. This is B minor. This is pretty common. Like this is A minor. So if you bar it and move it up, this is B minor, this is C minor, this is D minor. We're going from the root on the fifth string. Now to make a minor seventh, all I do is take off my pinky. D minor and D minor seventh are interchangeable. They're very, very close. Um, D minor seventh is a little more jazzy, a little softer sounding, and D minor leads more to a darker sound. And I just chose to put the D minor seventh in there and add just a little Colin Daniel touch there. And now we use a bass riff uh, that I heard in the uh, Jeff Healy version that the bass player played, but I'm going to use it on the guitar to help me launch into the D minor 7th change. And we're going to start again with an E. So we're going to start with an open E again. And by the way, the push is going to be at the same spot that the push was for the the A minor. It's the same timing. That's the theme of the song, right? The theme of the progression, the theme of the feel and the groove. Um, so we start with a low E. Now I slide up and it's kind of a random thing. If you're, if you're struggling with a slide, you don't even have to play the slide. You could just go. But the slide definitely adds a character to it. And basically we're going to launch yourself up to the D root which becomes part of the D minor 7th chord, right? So...
So that's open E, slide up from the third fret, using your third finger on the sixth string, slide up to the A, then cross over to the C on the fifth string, third fret, and fifth string. When you get to the fifth string, um, fifth fret, then you have to slide up. So when you get to the fifth string, fifth fret, you strike the D, which is the fifth string, fifth fret, and then you drop back down to the D bass and strike it and let it ring. And then you have time to drop your D minor seventh chord in place. One, two, three. sweet sounding riff with chord sounds great so you're gonna do that twice right for two bars so what happens see if you practice these separately in groups you're gonna have an easier time so what happens is you come off the last A one two three two three there's your first bar D Now we have to go back to the A for the last two bars. Okay, right here we've got another push. This is now we're up to bar eight, right? We did four bars of the A, two bars of the D, back to two bars of the A. That's the eight bars. We are in a ten bar phrase, so so far this progression totally follows. The, a 12, the standard 12 bar format. For bar number nine in standard 12 bar, we go to the five chord, and guess what? We go to the five chord uh, here too, and it's an E, and there's a bass note push, and again, I uh, decided to uh, take the idea uh, from one of the riffs in the Jeff Healy version and it, morph it into my guitar. So. This is what happens. This is a very traditional riff. It's the old blues riff. It's very famous. It's used in hundreds of songs. It's a low E again. Then it goes up to the A, then to the G. And it's all in the sixth string, so it's open, then fifth fret, then third fret. And then back to the E bass note, and then you strum your E minor chord. Sometimes I like to play an E minor seventh there too. Okay, so when we come off the D minor seventh, like on the last bar before we go back to the A, we got to do the A for two bars. Okay, right here instead of playing your push for the A again, you got to play the push for the E. And I decided to play an E minor 7th, which is easy enough to add to your E minor if you know an E minor already. Just put your pinky down on the 3rd fret 2nd string, and that makes for an E minor 7th. Again, the E minor 7th is just a little jazzy, a little softer sounding. And your choice, I switch back and forth all the time. So once you've got that, You've got nine out of the ten bars, and all we've got left is a closing riff. Now, I could get deep into the theory, but I'm not going to touch it because I need a lot more time to do that. But there is a chromatic passing note in it. It does come out of the scale, but it's, there's a chromatic passing note. Again, it starts on the E and goes. And then, of course, you're back into the progression. Uh, to start the cycle again. Now I, you can play those in chords or single notes or power chords. There's a whole bunch of ways. I'm just going to show it to you in single note because that's the easiest to handle it at first. Um, so you use your first, second, and third fingers on the sixth string on the third, fourth, and fifth fret. And that gives you a G, G sharp, and an A. So you start with your open E. Then you go over to the C, which is the third fret, fifth string. Back to the A, 
That's your root. You're done. So that riff happens in the same spot off the three ah that every other push has happened on just at the end of the E bar, right? So it comes, it comes off the ninth bar and morphs into the tenth bar and that becomes the end of your progression. So let's put that all together. One, two, three. So your first four bars is A minor. Two, three. Two, three. One more. Two, three. Now we're going to change to the D. Two, three. Okay, that's one bar D. We need one more. Back to the A. One more A. Now to the E, bar nine. Close. Awesome blues progression. If you really want to learn about blues, you should check out my course, riffninja.com, stage three. Um, thanks for your time, and I hope you found this really informative. We'll see you later.